Hello and welcome to episode 11, season 10 of the Euphoria podcast. We're available on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, SoundCloud, and Spotify. I'm Dracos. As always, Cadrell, my co-host sitting beside me. Our two special guests today from Rogue made it to Malmo. Top three secured, Oda Wamne and Easy. Larson. Welcome, Easy. guys. Easy clap. <laughs> Wait, it's already season 10? So we've been doing this for 10 years? Five, every, I don't, two, we've two kind of messed up at the start. The season, dive okay. guys pointed this out to me. Like, why are you even doing seasons? Just do episodes. But we've committed. Yeah. Committed. And you guys are hipsters, yeah. Yeah, it makes it sound like we're really it's prolific. Five years. Look at you, huh? I've only been here for two. Bro, I'm about to turn 30. <laughs> My life is like a mess. Please do not discuss time with me right now. I'm going to have a, I'm gonna have an existential crisis right here. The podcast isn't even going to be about League of Legends. It's going to be like, what are we all really doing with our lives? You know, what does it even mean? We must live what, in the what present. Is he, what is even the point? So let's, yeah, let's live in the present. Um, before we start, before we talk about this last weekend and the weekend that's coming up, I feel it's only fair that we show you our predictions. Phil, if we could, um, if we could show mine first. You may go in on Oh, us. no, here's Cadrell. I got the rogue. Cadrell. Oh, Cadrell is also not a believer. Yeah. See, the thing is, I bet on Fnatic losing, but they won, so that screwed everything up. And I also bet on Miss Mad to win. Uh-huh. I, all I see is that Rogue beat Excel, which, you know, seems likely happened. given how much Fnatic beat Excel. It was actually a pretty close series. But let's take, let's take a look at mine. Phil's, Phil, we got here. So... Uh, so you believe in Rogue as well? On the downside, uh-huh. <laughs> overestimated Mad may have given you guys not enough credit in that first series. On the bright side, I did say that you would beat Fnatic, just not in the match that you're currently playing against Fnatic. Nice save. You're, you're you like that? You like the little, little politicking? Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what about Vedius? What did Vedius do? What do we have, <laughs> do we have Vedius? <laughs> oh, sh- oh, oh, okay. He predicted the, them to be Fnatic as well. Yeah. Is so exactly, for wait, exactly in- the same as mine, no? That's exactly. Oh, except he said Rogue would be in finals. Ooh. Wait, but this doesn't Ooh, make sense. He said so, Rogue so, so we finals. lose to Mad, yep. but then we beat Mad later. So yep. we're on the. He thought you'd ramp up, I guess. Oh. The playoffs Do you, buff. I mean, playoffs narrative buff. The playoffs narrative buff. You guys, feel, you guys feel like the victims of the playoffs narrative buff sometimes. The G two get the buff. The Fnatic get the playoffs narrative buff. Rogue does not get the playoffs narrative buff. I feel like Fnatic gets it too. Yeah. How much how much stock do you put in any of the narratives? Does any of that stuff actually affect you? Do you guys actually like think about that going in? Like, oh shit, it's fanatic. They're gonna do some I think Odo hates his narrative. He's a bit mad about it. But <laughs> let's get it out. I let's get the frustrations out. Yeah, oh, no. oh. talk to us. Air, air your frustrations, bro. I mean, <sighs> but also come bring yourself. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I'm boiling a bit. For, but, uh... for for context, Odo's trying to find the right words that he can say in a podcast environment that are friendly because yeah, uh... he has a lot of feelings about this. Mm-hmm. I mean, okay, so you guys are partly to blame because, sure. because, yep, yep, because you guys are literally the hive mind of anyone who watches League of Legends casually because we obviously have the, you know, the scientists and stuff that obviously have a mind of their own, you know, mm-hmm. but... Um, Cadron and I have representatives of the you guys uneducated, represent uneducated the masses. masses. <laughs> yes, you guys literally represent the uneducated the masses. <laughs> like ninety percent of the people who tweet who tweet like shit at me or at other pro players is they come from you. So you guys are kind of partly to blame here. But okay, I mean I don't know. Uh, I, I mean the thing is with G two and Fnatic, they kind of have you know history to back it up. They're mm-hmm. like, oh wow, they won mm. at some point in their lives, so they must be good, you know. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's more recent now because I yeah. mean, G2 literally won last split. Fnatic, I don't know when Fnatic last won. It was like 2018. It's been, been a hot, hot minute since Fnatic. It's won. been a while, but they're still on the copium train, you know, from like from the glory days, you know. Mm-hmm. And I don't know they just have all of that to back it up, but we don't because we lost two of our last, like in the last four splits. This is the fourth split. We've been in two finals and we lost both of them. So mm-hmm. everyone's like. They have no history to back it up. They've mm. always lost finals, so they must be bad, you know? Yeah. So they're just kind of like on that hype train. And for me, just uh, it sucks because we're in this position. But at the same time, I feel like that's also kind of the predisposition, I guess, for mm-hmm. everyone to kind of, uh, you know, beat the loser. Just like when he's down, just come and kick him seven people more times. People do really like kicking people when they're Yes, down. they love it because you're just so defenseless. They know mm. that you can't fight back. So they just... They just take the free hit, you know, while uh, instead of, you know, praising the winner, you know, like in all of these finals or like at least in the finals that we lost, it's like, yeah, I mean, G2 was great. They clapped us really hard. Uh, Mad River swept us. Uh, 
that's really insane to reverse sweep and stuff mm. but everyone just focuses on the negatives and it's like yeah we don't have history to back it up we never won anything so they can never say oh they have the potential to win they can make a comeback or whatever they're just like oh they're just losers they lost two times out of two so they must be bad you know so that i feel like that's a bit unfair because at the same time we're also i don't know like winning a final is not easy or like i don't know just making it to the final is not easy not a lot of people it's only like five people each split out of 50 who make the final or like 10 people out of 50 Mm -hmm. make the final you know and winning it that's only like five out of 50 but instead of like you know seeing that as a you know slight achievement i mean making finals and losing is not really like some for some people it is an achievement but for some others it isn't for me it's not really Mm because i hate losing but I don't know, people uh, kind of just phrase it in their own way, the way they want to see it, and the way everyone wants to see it is just to kick the loser while he's down, because it's funny to do. I mean, it's kind of funny, you know? <laughs> it's kind of sad, but it's kind of it's, it's like messed up humor. Yeah, sometimes people are absolutely unleashed. And I do think that one thing that rings really true for me there is, like, I wish people would focus more on the positives. I think that there's a lot of praise to go around. And sometimes they do, you know? But it's obviously hard to see that when you lose a game and you've got random people sliding into your DMs to tell you that you're washed or whatever the hell that people say these days i mean it's like it can be really brutal um and it's just a really messed up part about pro play but i also think that does it is it something that weighs on you on game days or is it something that you just think about outside a game where you think about like the fact that people just instantly assume that the odds are kind of stacked against you guys because you don't have that history or that pedigree larson is that something that like bothers you at all because obviously it tilts odo outside (laughs) of the game i know he's i know he's like we've talked to him about it before and i know that he's relatively unfazed in game but like is that something that you think about at all when you when you go into a game like that or a big game Uh, i mean of course not uh but i've i heard this me for so many times now so i actually didn't care from start but now i heard it so many times now it's just like annoying yeah hmm uh, what is what is it that you hear specifically? No, I mean, it's choking memes. The choking memes. Yeah. Is it I more mean, so like just social media all the time? I mean, I can't deny that we're a part of that one. Shox literally wrote a bar about it. <laughs> in a rap, <laughs> in a rap <laughs> battle. I also yeah. wrote it. I mean, a yeah. player with I don't really, like, I agree with the choking meme, obviously. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think the only time we're like turbo choked was like 2021 20, summer. We're like, yep. we got absolutely uh, stomped mm. by, by Mad Frio and the Fnatic Frio. That was yep. like really disgusting. But otherwise, we have been performing like pretty decently in playoffs. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, I mean, you guys reverse swept Fnatic. You guys, in spring, you guys had a good series against Mad in the first round. So. And the thing is, coming into playoffs, people are usually not like saying, "Oh yeah, Rogue is gonna win it," because usually mm. people will still like favor like Fnatic or G two. Uh, so it's not like we're usually even the favorites in playoffs. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, consistently top two, top three though. I mean, at worst, this is another third place finish, which means four splits in a row where you finished or five splits in a row where you finished top three, maybe more. I think it's five splits. Yeah. It's 20 to 20 summer and then on from there. On from there, which I mean, is, is pretty crazy when you think about the consistency of results. Um, but shifting our attention away from kind of the pressure, the narrative side and into last weekend, obviously a difficult shift because we can't follow it up with being like, and we proved them wrong <laughs> right here in this series where we popped off and had a great one. 3-0 for G2. Um, game two felt... Pretty close, I would say, in a lot of instances. But game one, game three fell apart pretty quickly. I mean, game three was also like extremely free and like crazy free. But game three, yeah, you had a small early like game a lead, her- right? I'm mean, a pretty big early game lead. Uh, oh yeah, because you won the Herald fight. Yeah, they, yeah, like troll at Herald, and the game is really over, like turbo over. But then we managed to also run it down. So. Yeah, you. There was a catch around mid. They got yeah, two kills. Yeah, but in the end, in like 25 minutes, um, was the communication like breaking down? I don't want to start from the last game, but just. Now that you brought it up, what was what was the problem there? I don't think communication was breaking down. I don't know where we're so bad. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know. I don't, uh, I don't know. There's so many things. Like, there's so many things that you could say about the series, but uh, and then it's just like really bad. So a lot, what, a lot of things like macro, macro, like everything was bad. Mm. Yeah. What What were you guys doing in scrims or in practice or in previous games that like wasn't showing up in this series? Was it Was it draft? Was it early game? Like what was like What was the biggest difference? Well, like, I think scrims showed up kind of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the problem. Was it? I think that's the problem. But are you Are you Are you guys a losing scrims win on okay, stage we're, team we're, normally? No. Uh, yeah. I mean, no. Usually we are winning scrims, winning stage. Yeah. Quite Quite a lot. Mm. Usually we win a lot of scrims, but past like month we've been losing like 80 percent scrims maybe i don't know how much is that? really 70 percent yeah 70%. i mean i think uh, and uh, we're not used to it we're used to like winning perma yeah uh yeah. i mean i don't mind losing a bit uh, i think it's fun but uh because i'm used to winning scrims and it's like gives a different vibe going into the games uh, <laughs> yeah. i feel like into the like, state games give a different vibe if we're like 
uh, going all firing screams like five zero gives it like less pressure. I feel like if you mm. go I four actually, but mm. obviously I rather not like it's something screams. But so it's fun to be on the other side of the coin. So does it feel clear to you then? I mean, it's not, that's a pretty brutal record in scrims what 80 percent, 70 percent losses i think i made the i think i was bored one day when uh, it was like a r- after a rough day of scrims and i uh, i was like let me just let me just actually count how many games you won in like the last three weeks and i think our yeah. win rate was like like 12 wins 60 something losses you know so when did when was that from week eight <laughs> yeah from week eight until now bro really? oh, i, I mean sure? up until like last i think going into the g2 series that's i don't think it's that bad no i think it was I Do mean, you guys have like spreadsheets of all no, your no, no. high press games? Just, okay, the thing is, I might have been like kind of slightly on the mega tilted side yeah, and I maybe yeah, like yeah. blew it out of the water. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I for sure, our it was maybe like around 20, 25, 30% tops, you know? Yeah, I would say like 25%. And are, the, you, are you screaming top? Like, are we, scream, are we screaming like teams like G2 and Mad consistently non stop, or is this just like most teams on the league in playoffs? It was kind of like, I mean. Usually like top six, top seven. Mm-hmm. I mean, outside, like, I mean, sometimes we get, we had like, you know, Astralis and stuff, uh, but it was mostly just like whoever we had in playoffs up until now, it was kind of like, uh, I guess, the main scrim teams that we yeah. were kind of like going again. But yeah, like, I don't know. And there's I'll, one team of boost that are win rate, uh, Misfits, so that, that, <laughs> they mean, complete the boost that are win rate. Actually, I... <laughs> like, like, that, like, that's the thing. We, we, we had this like awful, like, couple of weeks of scrims. Yeah. But then... I mean, now that they're out, they can't they can't fight us back. So it's kind of I, I kind of go on that thing, you know, that I just said that I'm just kicking you don't the guy kick that he's down. down and <laughs> no, he no, no, fight you just back. played. You played really well on those misfit scrims. It sounds like you guys just played really great. <laughs> yeah. You wanted positivity. Let's misfits so we can make put up a fight. You guys put up a fight, but you guys just yeah. So the thing is, it was like we had like a really good. You know, like a 5 0 day, we were like, oh, we're back, baby. Woo! And then we G2 just clapped us 3 0 and we're like, hmm. Yeah. 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 Is it is it a situation? Because I feel like when you're losing that many scrims, is it like you guys clearly know what's going wrong? It's one issue that you're struggling to solve, or is it like a bunch of little things? Like, do you feel like you have a firm grasp on what it is you guys need to change or fix in order to, let's say, come into the the series here in the semifinals in Malmo? Or is it like, is it a lot of little things and it's starting to feel kind of frustrating or like a lot to overcome i mean some main things but also a lot of small things uh but i mean i don't know I, at this point you're not gonna improve that much in scrims like it's just a few scrims left until you see so the only thing that matters is having like the proper mental on stage mm. so i don't care if you win or lose in scrims right now uh, the only thing that matters is if you have the right mental on stage is the only thing that matters to me but. i mean it's just kind of like i think depends on the group of people you kind of have on the team and the personalities how they work because for mm-hmm. example um what was it 2016 with uh forgiven yeah i think we were like it was like summer playoffs before worlds and stuff and we were just screaming and we were losing every every game and we were like okay let's just stop screaming and we didn't scream for like two weeks and then we went on stage and we just were throwing people left and right because the more we were screaming the more like damaging it was Mm. so for that group for example we just need to kind of ditch screams all together because it was like it was more important to kind of like preserve your mental you know Mm -hmm. not uh play more and tilt each other because i mean realistically after a, after a long year well every year is longer i guess but after a whole year um the issues that you kind of have at the end of the year were kind of in one way or another present there the whole time and people kind of got used to it and uh some people might deal with like those issues being there differently because mm-hmm. they might not have the patience or they're just too frustrated to you know iron out those little things so I don't know, like what Larson says is right. I mean, for us, I think um, there was like a lot of small things that you need to improve. And it's kind of like, it's not like big things, you know, it's just like really small, annoying things that are just like always there, but they're not like a really big impact, but you, they're just like a lot of them. So you need to kind of like really try to iron them out because they will just start, start stacking up to something big, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, it, it, it's, it's mostly just that, that uh, kind of happened for us. And Maybe, I don't know, uh, just too much frustration or uh, uh, lack of patience to, to go into all of them. So, I don't know. I, I think we, we kind of know everything we need to do. It's just, uh, you know, just having the patience and having good um, mental state on stage. Because right now, scrims don't really matter anymore. Because it's just like, what do you want to get from scrims? Because you are aware of your issues. You are aware of the potential fixes to those issues, you know. 
Uh, and in scrims, it's mostly like repetition, you know, you just like you get into that situation and you try to apply what you think is the correct fix. And also just like analyzing drafts, you know, that's kind of like when you're this late in the season, that's kind of the only things you can get from scrims. Yeah. Yeah. You can also practice things, I presume, like we saw G2 pull out the things like the Senna Seraphine. Um, yeah. When you're in this month of scrims, just uh, as a last question around this kind of scrim uh, era that you're, you're going through and you're struggling through, were you trying things out or was it just everything was just slowly falling apart and crumbling and then... I don't know, it started sucking out of nowhere. It's like, we actually had very good win rating scrims. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then out of nowhere, it started to like lose every single game. Yeah. Despite that... Maybe not out of nowhere. Uh, <laughs> kind of know. I mean, maybe not out of nowhere, but I mean... <laughs> okay, so there's some reasons behind it that you're working on. Yeah. Yeah. But at this point, I mean, you've worked like the whole year and... Yeah, I mean, I get it. Yeah. There's some reason that you... I mean, if you'll tell them Bryce that I think Mad was getting like stomped every scrim, like when they were winning playoffs, like last yep. year in like spring and summer. Yeah. I think they were like... So yeah. that's your that's your that's your like yeah. mechanism. That's like, yeah. well, the, last year, the coping, coping well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. coping kicking in. Yeah. No, I get it. No, but Otto's right. I've been to that myself as well. You have all these small things that add up. Like we lose the game level one because we're not warding, or we're getting randomly dying to these ganks, or our AD carry is getting caught on midwave again, and we're losing a game for it for no reason, and everyone just gets like tilted, and then you start pointing fingers, and you start digging a hole, and then you civil know, war. It's the small things that start to add up. Like why do I even try to jungle if my bot lane's dying to a level two gank, which I told them to ward last game, and they died to it as well like you know it's just that's the kind of frustration that pro players go through uh when the repetition happens over and over and over but people don't learn i think that's how the frustrations come through as well yeah it makes me feel like at some point we should have a whole episode about like conflict resolution in a pro player environment because i'm curious how that works but for now we can focus <laughs> in it's either a lot of sarcasm or a lot yeah, of shouting. that doesn't sound like resolution <laughs> it sounds, like, yeah that doesn't that doesn't sound great not that i'm great at conflict resolution to be honest but it's, it's a hard skill to to have but it just sounds difficult to sit with all that stuff that said uh focusing in again on the series Series. There's a lot of like interesting things that happened in this series. I think bot lane meta was particularly interesting to me. Now, Seraphine Senna, this is something I heard was coming back in like 12 12 when her E cooldown got buffed or whatever. Were you guys, was this something that you guys were like ready for? I know you banned the Oswa phase two game one. That seemed like the big one that you were scared of. No, yeah, I mean, okay, so I think our coach Freddy was, was drafting like every uh, live hour he had this week. Like, remember, like one hour hours he drafted last week? And he was like perma drafting. Mm. Yeah. But I don't think there was a single scenario where they picked Senna Seraphine. <laughs> it's the classic. <laughs> so, it's the classic. Yeah. yeah. I was like, Freddy, they would probably just pick something like random anyway. And he was like, He's going to drawing he, board like infinite scenarios. Yeah, no, yeah. I see them all. <laughs> and he was like 100 notebooks and uh, scrolling to find their Renekton first pick uh, yeah. or something or, you know, <laughs> their Zero first pick. Uh, yeah. No, I think the Senna Seraphine looked like a, a bit of a problem, to be honest. Um, I mean, I didn't really expect it myself either, but I think G2's bot lane, when I first saw it, it could be Senna Yasuo, it could be Senna Seraphine, Senna Tom, Senna Sion, like... Yeah. I mean, the thing with G2 is, you know they'll play something stupid. Like, they always playing something stupid. So, yeah, I mean, I, we in, I mean, I knew it was kind of coming, like, something something mm. weird was coming. And the virus. Do you guys... Do you yeah, I mean, that was obvious. Though. I mean, yeah, his spam is solo queue, so... Mm. Yeah. You, and you played it a little bit as well, but before we get to the yeah. virus, are, are you guys, do you guys feel comfortable, like, adapting to picks like this on the fly? Like, does he, do you feel, like, ready, like, you can look at a Seraphine and be like, okay, we kind of know what he's going to try to do here, or is it just, like, shit, now I have, like, no idea what's happening in the I mean, We line. are the OG Senna Seraphines, I think. I think we're the one who, like, played, started playing this duo first. I think so. I, I mean, like in, spring in, even in, like, spring think, when it was, uh, when yeah. we were, like, hipsters, you know? I think we're the ones who pulled out this first, and we created this Senna Seraphine thing, I think, so... We kind of know, we, yeah, we're, we're, we're experts it. at it. Because to me, the thing, the biggest thing that I noticed was like those random TPs from bot lane. It's like the first time I've seen a bot laner take TP in years. Not years, but, you know. It's mostly had, like a Senna thing because yeah. you see Tom Kench with TP and yeah. stuff. I mean, I think as individuals, we're mostly, I mean, we're quite adaptive when it comes to, you know, identifying how those champions work or like new champions work. Uh, I mean, as a team... Uh, you could say that I think in spring we are quite slow to adapt to like, you know, drafting to like changing sides, changing our bands and stuff in the middle of the series and stuff. But I think even now it's like getting better. Like um, we're not uh, taking the, what was it? Uh, tier five games thing that Fnatic did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or like three games, I think it was, whatever. That Fnatic did when they got reverse swept. Uh, I think even like against G2, we tried to go to different side, change bands. So we changed our bands quite early. So, I mean, we're working on that. Um, got better than when we were just refusing to change sides and we were just only going blue, staying same bands. Because it's really easy to just be like, 
Yeah, I mean, draft wasn't the problem. It was just gameplay. We just play better and their champs are bad, you know? Yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, that's not... true often, though. I mean, I it, it is, but you can also just make your job a lot easier by just admitting that, yeah, there's something better. In I mean, the there's two sides of coins. Either you're right and the draft is actually good or you're wrong. So, you can't flip it and go with the same draft as a fanatic does. I mean, against us, they just kept playing TF and Fresh. Yeah. yeah. And it didn't work. But against Excel, they just kept playing against Yumi, I think. Even though yep, they lost yep. the first two games, I think. So it's like a 50 50. In that series, I it guess, worked yeah. out for them to just keep giving you and just hoping that they're right about the read. Yeah. And that's the thing, because if they would lost that game three, then the whole conclusion of that series yeah. would be why the f didn't they ban Yumi? Like, Fnatic, it's so simple. The answer's right in front of you. And then, you know, they beat them with, with, with Yumi, right? And then there's similar situations where it's like subbing in and out players. Why'd you sub out this player? They win with that player. What the hell's going on? So the narrative or like the public sentiment can change so quickly around it, whether it's right or wrong, just based on the result, right? Yeah, and I mean, it's it, that's just I think that's always going to happen because it's just the easiest thing to go on to. That's why draft is always so talked about. It's like even if you don't have information on the draft, you can go, why did you, how dare you like watch a game Renekton doesn't do anything? Why Renekton trash champion Odawamne? Why did you pick this champ? Obviously, it's bad. I mean, I, th I told you meta nowadays is that everyone is like a scientist on the internet. <laughs> Everyone's like a League of Legends scientist. <laughs> we have a lot of public analysts uh, about like drafts and stuff. And I mean, uh, I mean, everyone's like, there's not like black and white, you know, there's always like a gray area with this yeah. where like, even if someone makes a, a really big argument of like why something is good or bad, you know, it doesn't mean that he's 100% correct because mm. there's always like something that someone is thinking that you're not really like aware of, you know, because it's not like, you just I don't know, it's, it's not chess, you know, where you can analyze something mathematically or whatever, you know, results based. It actually works in chess because it's just like, it's just black and white. It's like, mm. there's, there's no, no hidden ground. information. Yeah, there's yeah. no hidden information. While in League, I feel like you need to factor a lot of random stuff, you know, Variables. like human factor. Yeah stuff in game comforts yeah all of this stuff game so it's state. like i mean i agree i mean i think it's great that there's like a lot of a lot of this information out there and it actually just benefits the community a lot uh it's just i don't know i think it's always going to be a sensitive subject because not uh i don't know not everyone can you know fully understand what's going on you know well and i think that's one of the things that makes it really interesting for people to engage with but also can probably make it really difficult as a pro player don't want to spend too much time on this topic but um just like generally like you're always in a position where you can't share all of the context behind the scenes and you shouldn't because you're a pro team you have to keep your street cards you have to keep your strategies you have to keep your issues to yourself that's respectable but as a downside of that it means that like you're never going to get a quote-unquote fair trial in the eyes of the public because they're just never going to know right until someone writes a book five years from now and we find out that oh, that playoffs series when they let the Sarah and Seraphine through it, it was Odo's fault. You know, like, you know like someone just comes out and just tells everything. He was tilted. He's popping off. No, I'm just I'm kidding. But like, yeah, that's just how it is. And I think that's the it's one of the things that makes engaging so interesting is that like not all the information's there. So people get to speculate, but also makes it can make it very, very difficult. Um, the other pick from the series that I thought was really interesting, though, segueing out of that is is mid lane Varus. You said you knew it was coming. I know you played it in solo queue as well. It looked fine. You almost clapped him. You guys had a nice, you got the flash, you came back mid lane, you killed him again. You almost got the shuffle in mid lane until he had the balls of steel and he just stood there yeah. right in your face. Absolutely fearless. Um, thoughts on the pick, Larson? Do we get to see more of this? Because I, I know you played it too. Maybe is this a now? Uh, so it's one of those champs. I'm not sure if it's used as a OP. Like, it's so hard to judge. Uh, it's, in the, it's on either side. <laughs> yeah. That, there's sometimes these champs that yeah, are just OP or some just extremely useless and yeah i think sometimes he can be op maybe and sometimes he will be turbo useless mm. i'm not completely sure about it is i was it, trying to play it myself to like understand it because mm -hmm. i understood it was coming uh yeah is it ever a situation where you're like we got his ear and then are you thinking immediately about the virus or is it just another pick in a series of picks that someone could opt to for against his ear is that ever something that you're like oh no now i have to watch out the virus is potentially coming yeah i mean against caps i guess you do yeah Mm -hmm. uh, I'm still not sure about my read on it and it's in it to do some research but yeah because uh, uh, that yeah. game it looked like he had no engage and you were really engaged but a lot of the times so those two dragon fights I remember where you got like stopped on your shuffle one was like a seraphine route and one yeah. you went for like a flash one but it didn't hit them I don't know where your flash went but it looked like I you mean, just I missed it I mean my flash went you went weq into the tribush and then I think you tried to ult them but you only got like two no, I mean the... I mean I flash ult I think my flash was maybe like not 550 units maybe mm. like 450 units yeah, but it didn't, didn't matter because uh, i mean all of the carries flashed like 
I mean, I flashed ult and after Kelly's flashed, but I still got Aatrox, and mm. I mean, that fight was pretty one. Mm. Uh, but yeah. Did you feel like you guys uh, in the game one, game two, just draft talk wise, you lacked the comp to deal with the Senna Seraphim because you didn't have that much engage? I, I felt like it in game. Yeah. I remember in the second game, uh, I guess our one engage is Asir flash ult. Uh, yeah. Mm. And they're just, you are basically the only one that can deal with them because you might have range. Because when you go in on Renekton, one Varus Q, one Root, like you basically <laughs> look like in the fights, you went in, you did one stun, you had to flash out instantly. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, in hindsight, uh, maybe our answer wasn't the best. Because in game I was playing and I was like, okay, I'm really tanky. You know, I even have, uh, I even had Yumi, I think, at some point, And I'm yeah. like, I think I was. Uh, in one fight I was 60% HP and I just died from Varus WQ and I was like okay and yeah. I was like okay hey, look. he just burned me through 200 MR and his Q did 1.8k damage and I was like <laughs> okay it's my my job is not easy this game you know after after that I was like Oof. yeah it, it's not it's not it's not great it's my I'm kind of useless <laughs> the game the game looked semi playable when you had flashes up but the problem was like you had flashes up and then you get the, the Seraphine alt out, you get the Varus alt out, and then you probably don't have flash up at that point, and then you're back to fighting without flash in the first place. Like, it just looked... Yeah, I mean, I think one of the mistakes that we did was actually just playing front to back. I feel like playing, playing front to back um, against, you know, like, Seraphine, Varus, Senna, mm -hmm. Wukong even, even like Aatrox. I mean, it's so hard for us to just walk in, you know? I feel like it's so easy for us, uh, for them to just, you know, outrange us and just throw random mm. skill shots at us and we're just going to get, like, chipped down slowly, you know, and we can't really find, like, a good way to engage. And I feel like, uh, at least in that game too, maybe the way we approached fights was, well, was not bad, was not the greatest, you know, because we felt like, if we have, like, Yumi's in Zao, then uh, maybe we can do something like that. Yeah. Uh, but I think, I don't know, we needed to really try to break formation and not just make it so easy for them to just kind of see us where they're all coming from and then they just can throw skill shots at us you know? yeah that's the thing in in i always pick up lpl SK, but i'll just use this example it's very rare that you see a dragon fight in that region in the top teams where it's just head on 5v5 unless they're both playing really heavy front to back comps a lot of times they think it's champions like sin Zhao or, or wukong or leblanc or Renekton or Silas champs who always go around the sides of the dragon to kind of squeeze them so that they actually have to run backwards and you get control of the river or they have to run forwards and you can sandwich them right because that's just so much more threat uh, on their carries but it looked like in your fights you guys were just kind of going head on a lot of the time yeah I mean in game two I had a flank at some point but then I was like I thought it was not gonna do much so mm. I just went back to front to back and it was actually it was actually pretty bad but yeah I mean I don't know I I, I think for sure that should have been something that we were doing. Because, I mean, if you have, like, you know, Orn or something, if you have, like, all new missions out, then, yeah, you can just go front to back and yeah. uh, add a Drake. And then when you see them all stack up, you just you just pull the trigger, you know? Yeah. I think we're talking, like, negative about the Drake fights, though, because we lost the game. I think we actually won, like, two out of three Drake fights. Like, we lost the first one, we won the second one. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the third one, we were hard winning until Sir flashed in and got one-tapped. Was this game two? Yeah, yeah, game two. Yeah. I remember. So, uh, like, reality, yeah. I kind of won like two out of three Drake fights. I mean, it's it ended the, up the fight that, that ended was one with Senna versus Yumi. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That yeah. fight was like one until Siri flashed in. So it was, I mean, I don't, I don't I know. I think, yeah, do you feel... Up. That's you, not that unplayable. I mean, yeah. This felt, because I rewatched the series this morning. Um, and I remember watching the series and feeling like the series was super, super one-sided. But going back, it felt like there were multiple games where you guys had pretty good early game position. There were multiple games where you had pretty good winning fights. You know, game two, game three, especially where... You guys won the first Herald fight. It felt like you were in control. But every time when you guys built this lead, it felt like it collapsed very quickly. Yeah. Um, what was going through your head? What was going through communications in those games? Because you guys had leads. You were pulling ahead. And then suddenly it was like G2 sacked bot wave, heralded your top side, killed two people, got mid lane two. And just it, inst it felt like it almost instantly fell apart. Is that something that G2 did really well that caught you off guard? Is that communication breakdown on your side? Like what happened... Um, specifically in like this game three where you guys did win the first Herald fight. You guys did have a pretty solid lead, um, but then it all just kind of collapsed. I can't really remember in game three how comms were. I mean, mm. I don't know. I think maybe everything went downhill when they made that catch on mid when they killed two. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, I think up until that point, you're maybe like equal gold or like decent chances to fight. But I felt like maybe after that... Um, they kind of got a, like a big gold swing and then the game was kind of like out uh, on our hands because usually like communication starts dying in teams when you feel like you don't have the tools to you know like yeah do stuff because the person who feels like he can do stuff then he's really active in comms like for example 
if I play Orn and I'm running to mid, then I will just be like, okay, we're contesting this wave. Let's look for this guy who has sums, who doesn't, all mm. of this stuff, you know? But when when stuff like this happens, when you kind of lose the goal lead and then even like your guy that is like super strong starts falling behind and you feel like you don't really have the tools, you know? So you're kind of like in this standby mode. And I don't mm. know if it's like, you know, maybe out of my approach or like our approach is bad, but at least that's kind of like what I felt like was always happening throughout all my years of playing that, you don't really want to clutter comms. You want to just kind of be on standby until you see an opportunity. And when you see an opportunity, you become like super active with comms mm -hmm. again, you know, because it's not like if if we're losing and everyone's like, oh, guys, we need to do something. Let's do something. Let's uh, look here. Can we do something here? Oh, we can do. Then you're just kind of, you know, it's kind of just stressing people out 24-7. So it's even though you're losing, you kind of still need to pick your moments to get everyone on the same page to do this play you know so i'm not really sure in game three when uh when it went downhill mm -hmm. but maybe it was after that thing when they the two picks made the wukong yeah. and on the e yeah for well. sure yeah i made those three win before that yeah because i think when that happens everyone's like ah oh. yeah you know? <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's it's not good anymore but uh yeah i mean i think i don't know like games two and three were like or even game one was like okay but then i think they were just like they made a good series of picks and then they just started to keep taking all the towers everywhere and then the gold swung really hard and you're like okay it's kind of bad but i know game two and three were like a lot a lot closer you know mm -hmm. um felt like we could have uh we could have won if we played it a bit uh better because not like we were getting stomped you know i mean we got three old yep. but that's just because they they just played mid game and i guess late game at some point a lot a lot better than us you know we were mm -hmm. not clean enough they did death. They death balled you a lot too in those first. Two I games. mean, I, I think we didn't. Uh, one of the things that I uh, I can say, or maybe I think maybe we could have done a lot better in this series is maybe we should have played two lanes a lot more because mm -hmm. I think we are always going three lanes and maybe we should have we should have looked to you know dead ball as well. Just play two lanes a lot more yeah. and just you know look to sack to kind of advance the game because maybe in game two when we were like so ahead in gold. Because I don't know, we, we should have been, I think we were ahead in maybe like 2 or 3k at some point, at least that's how I felt in game. Mm -hmm. uh, we could have looked to just uh, sack one side of the map just so we can, you know, advance. At least with both lane, because I feel like tier 1 bot from enemy team was up for a really long time. And we should have maybe just sack our tier 1 top just so we can get, because if we get the bot tier 1, I think uh, all those direction and against will be a lot easier for us. Because you then, can play through both. Yeah, because yeah. we can also play through both and make that wave always uh, push a lot deeper. And then we, it gives us more time to, you know, play for control. So mm -hmm. I feel like maybe that's one of the mistakes that we did. We didn't play two lanes enough. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I mean, at least for me and I think for everyone, there's like, uh, there's some focus on, what? you know, yeah. not opening three anymore. When, when you say you're playing too much on three lanes, were you just one three wanting a bit too much, you, you think? Or is it just you should think that maybe mid should have grouped mid more or you could have shadowed your solo lane more? Or that is that how you would see playing two lanes better? I mean, yeah, three lane, I mean, it's mostly... I mean, when people play three lane, it's mostly like me and Larson just catching waves together and syncing yeah. up on mid wave and just contesting that. But I think two lanes is where you're just like, you push deep, like you push the... Let's say for the example, Larson is pushing deep mm -hmm. top and it's crashing at tier two and then... He's either shifting to mid and then we go into bot, or he's just like, you know, keeping Basing and running bot or something. Yeah, yeah just yeah. stuff like that, where you just, you know, play hard on two lanes so you can actually start pressuring, you know? Because mm. then if we push deep top, then they're the ones catching, you know, then they are on three lanes, you know? So I felt like it was always like three lanes into three lanes instead of like, you know, looking to. Which is just a lot of matching in three lanes into three yes. lanes, really, isn't it? Because that's the thing, because for example, I was getting, uh, I mean, my pick was like, okay, if we kept forcing, because I played Renekton into Aatrox and I kind of got, you get outskilled 1v1 quite early. Uh, mm -hmm. But in skirmishing, you're still like, okay. So that's the thing. I was like, I was just chilling bot. And I think I even have like, I had a bit of a lead in game two. But I just couldn't press it at all because my champ was kind of, it doesn't win 1v1 anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I felt like that's kind of when the game stalled a lot because maybe we could, we could have accelerated a bit more. Mm. Larson, for you, do you, do you agree with the sentiment? Maybe dropping, playing on two lanes? Are you feeling optimistic about the run back, the potential run back, rather, versus G2? Yeah, I mean, I'm very confident. Like, even though we got all three there, I feel like if we play uh, to the highest level we can, we, we can, like, fear them, for example. Uh, yeah. uh, this sounds crazy to say after we got all three, but uh, that's what I truly believe. Well, I mean, that's the confidence that I think you need to have, but obviously getting ahead of ourselves a bit as your next opponent is going yeah. to be Fnatic. Talking a little bit about their run. In Malmo. I, uh, in Malmo. In, we're in Sweden. We're in Sweden. <laughs> Pentakill in Sweden. We're in Sweden. 
that's going to come. We're, me and Medic are both going to meme it this weekend, I'm sure. We're in Sweden. I can't wait. Every, every time a Swedish player does anything. Yeah, you're going to get the Swedish flag. He's, going for, he's going for <laughs> mid-wave. We're in Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> need to, I need to learn some Swedish phrases for when Larson oh, yeah. pops off. You know, like how do the we, Swedish How superstar. do we say, like, yeah, like, what's a positive thing we can say about a player when they're playing well in Swedish? Like, good uh, job. I don't know. I forgot about my language. Uh, <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> do you think in English as well? Yeah. Okay, so the Sweden, Swedish is, the so is gone. Yeah. gone. Yeah. It's gone. Yeah, it's I'm back sure, in actually. Malmo. Yeah. <laughs> we'll find it in Malmo. That's fine. We'll find, it. we'll find our trash talk elsewhere. We'll bring it up. We'll make sure to praise you in Swedish for the, for the fans, little fan service out there. But talking about Fnatic... Two, I would say, pretty one-sided series, which caught me a bit off guard because the XL series was so damn close and generally kind of sloppy. But Fnatic as a whole looked like a very different team this weekend. Caught me off guard. What did you guys think watching the the first series on Friday, uh, if you were able to watch it, about Fnatic's performance? Was that more about Fnatic being suddenly very good or Misfits just much weaker than XL? What what did we actually see in that series? I I think Misfits is way weaker than XL, like a lot weaker. I think Mm -hmm. XL is pretty strong. Uh, I was like surprised when G2 lost a game to uh, Misfits, for example. Uh, so I mean that I was not surprised by that. But I was surprised like how dominant they were against Mad. Uh, so I mean definitely look very strong. Seems like they found some joy to play the game again. Seems like like two months regular season seemed boring for them or something, and now they're actually like yeah, it seems like they're enjoying it way more to play the playoffs. Yeah, is this are they an opponent that you guys are like feeling all right? I saw an interview with Freddie where he's like, yeah, we want to play Fnatic. We're, we're hype. We want to play Fnatic. You know, he said over Matt, at least, was what he was going for there. I think that was before they played their series. But how do you feel about this matchup? It looks like a lot of Razork doing Razork things, crazy stuff, and a lot of bot side focus. It's a lot a, of bot side focus. A lot of bot side focus. A little bit different than the Senna Seraphine of the, the G2 days. It's going to be a lot more spicy. You might just have to be on or This might just be tanks in the top lane. Yeah. That's just spectating. You and Wonder <laughs> <laughs> trading since season six, just yeah. trading top side tank yeah. matchups. I mean, going all the way back to their season, I feel like... Uh, I mean, Razork is like showing off in playoffs, definitely. Yeah. Uh, his impact in the games is a lot, a lot bigger than in the regular season. But I also feel like he's just, you know, three series of bot defy. Well, not three series, because the thing is, against Excel, it wasn't really bot defy, because uh, Patrick and Mickey were actually really good in mm-hmm. lane, and it became, you know, uh, in a way, a stalemate, or they were just kind of like trading blows a lot. But I feel like what I saw, at least in Misfits and Mad series, is just that bot lane was was like you know blasting off really hard with uh, you know like i guess champs that can abuse bowling like nami nami Kalista, illusion yeah. and kalista and stuff like that so i mean it's definitely a focus for them identity right now i mean for top lane looks like yeah i mean i don't know series is gonna be all around bot i feel like even against g2 you know everyone's like oh yeah you just uh abuse bot or you abuse flag it and stuff like this mm. But then they went like the Senna Seraphine route with like a lot of bot lane bans. So it kind of made the made that lane a bit more more neutral, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. We're gonna see how it's gonna be against Fnatic because I think we we kind of see how they want to play and stuff. I feel like a lot of the teams that played against them, I didn't really see what happened in Excel, how it was the bot lane meta trade. But I felt like in Misfits and Mad Series, they were just. They were just getting everything they were they, they were wanting, you know. I mean, yeah. maybe the the other oh, the other meta picks were banned, you know. But I feel like it's just teams are not looking at what makes a team OP, like what's their own, you know, meta read. Which I felt like for them was, you know, obviously, fist fighting bot, uh, a lot of you know agents in the game for upset mm-hmm. and stronger jungler, I guess. Yeah, I don't know what changed. Well, I do kind of know what changed, but looking at their regular season for Fnatic, they played one Lucian game, they played two Draven games at the start, and then they just dropped all like lane pressure lanes. Didn't play Kalista, stopped playing Lucian, didn't play Draven again after week one. And then you go to playoffs and they're playing Lucian Nami every game. You have to ban Ram it. jamming it. They're playing Kalista. Like, what's changed a lot for me from regular season Fnatic to playoffs Fnatic is Razor would just pick early game junglers no matter what now. Trundle or Poppy first rotation doesn't care about jungle matchup. And bot lane will play Kalista or Lucian Nami and they will just play for 2v2. And you could see in the in the Mad series especially, they were getting 2v2 kills on things like Kalista, but they were also stacking waves so well. And Razor would just come down, tank the tower, instant double kill, and there was no response. And I remember having this discussion week seven maybe about Fnatic and why they're struggling and they were never bringing mid to bot they're always just going always just going with jungle mm-hmm. uh, but I felt like in their series like Humanoid's been hovering around bot side so much more um, so there's actually more threat of a four-man dive so upset can get more ahead 
And Humanoid's also been playing more uh, kind of hard to gank champs, I'll say, because it has mobility. Like Silas, LeBlanc, Ari, he's just been playing a lot of mobility mids, which can actually just fast push waves and hover towards. There's some Victor stuff. though, two against a Victor, but. Two games of victor, yeah. And one of them was against Matt, I think it was. Uh, yeah. He's a younger respecter now. He's so a, a solo can yeah, he's a younger he's, respecter, so. Yeah, he's not been dying that much to yeah. ganks. In in regular season, Humanoid was dying. To Re like, regular season, you could, he does you not respect just, jungle. You could just... And he was dead. In mid, <laughs> like, I'm not even kidding. Uh, but but now he, he's unkillable. He's, he's, he's Larson level of like mental can't die to jungle. Um, and their bot jungle is just insane. Uh, and Wunder has always been Wunder, so. Yeah, I feel like we'll probably see more of the same. I feel like it's just... Lucian Nami and maybe a Trundle. I mean, this is obviously something that you guys are very aware of. We don't have a uh, comp or Trimby here. How do you guys feel about the the bot lane matchup? Are you guys a team that's just ready to like? I've I know Maorang is always ready for a fist fight early game. <laughs> that's like quintessential to Maorang identity. Is that when we look at it? Obviously, that's the simple analysis for the series. But it sounds like that's pretty fair, right? Like bot, yeah, bot do or die. Win in two v two, or rather, probably more like three v three slash four v four, depending on the amount of people that show up there. I expect some action in bot lane yeah, for sure. I'll be surprised if there's not a lot of faction. Mm. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, regular season, you guys were kind of the aggressive bot lane team. I mean, comp on Callista was a huge factor in so many of your wins. So I would have thought that this would be like, I, th I would think that this was actually would be a matchup that favors you pretty well. Is that a strength that you feel like you guys have held on to? Obviously, we didn't get to see it as much in the G2 series because they just neutralized, as you highlighted, with the Senna Seraphine. But or do you guys still feel like you're really solid at playing around bot lane? Yeah, I think we match up against that very well. Uh, I mean, we also know them extremely well. I guess every team knows them very well. They have very uh, distinct play style and distinct champs that are important uh, that I'm not going to go too deep into. But I think everyone knows like how, how Fnatic works, right? So, yeah. I'm mm. looking forward to it. I think Fnatic just surprise everyone. And like... Yeah, everyone kinda, big credit to Fnatic. Everyone kind of counts them out because they never really found that regular season formula. You know, Humanoid looked like he was just basically done. Wunder was always doing pretty fine. Bot lane was never really shining in early to mid game. They were shining later stages of the game yeah. because that's the way they drafted. And Razork was just trying to find comfort because most of the split he was playing things like Viego, Wukong and couldn't have early he, game yeah, impact. So. He looked very lost in the um, regular season until week eight. Week eight, Razork started popping off and it yeah. just, just kept going. And now... There. You've got like upset breaking DPM records and Razork being part of every kill, basically. So, uh, Fnatic looks good. They're on the up. I think we counted them out a little bit. Yep. I think a lot of people counted them out. Um, but now they're they're in, in the playoffs race in the top three, which is uh, which is always interesting. Yeah, big credit to Fnatic, big credit to Razork. So, every week we assign a, a Euphoria MVP. It's like Kia MVP, but from us, you know, it's not very subjective. For as well. like <laughs> this week or like last week? For last or? week, last week's games. Now, uh, is there anyone that comes to your mind when you guys think about MVP? It's easy to have you. Here. Normally, we ask people on, and they've just won their series, so we always have a hard time because it's like, oh, we have to vote for you guys. But now we're going to be completely unbiased. I mean, Larson MVP. I mean, we lost, but I've never been MVP, so. Larson, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we can no. in good faith give no, you MVP. No, that would be so biased. <laughs> that would be biased. I, I have two people in mind. I have uh, Razork and Targamas, and I feel like we did Razork dirty last week. Well, not dirty, but he also could have won last week so this is could second week running week, yeah. where he could have won so i have a feeling that i want to put razork and targamas razork you can't put both i think razork is really fair yeah. i think razork, razork is fair, razork yeah, yeah, yeah. fair. How, do you feel, how do you feel about targamas he was obviously he was everywhere in the g2 series the center looked really obnoxious for you what is your impression of him as a player because earlier you mentioned like oh you want to be g2 attack through the bottom lane seems to be what most people focus on the top side is still for i think in most people's eyes the strongest part of that team is that still an angle you feel like is attackable? Because from my eyes, at least from my perspective, it does feel like they've been getting better and they're actually pretty solid these days as opposed to maybe previous splits where you could really just focus bot lane. Yeah, I mean, I think he's getting a lot better. Uh, I personally really like him as a player. His champion pool always is pretty big and he always find like, you know, good picks. And I mean... I don't know. People say that they were like kind of inters, but I didn't really see maybe him personally as an inter. I always mm -hmm. thought that he's like doing good stuff and he's pretty smart. So, I mean, definitely big improvement. Um, I wouldn't say that, you know, his Senna was like everywhere and mm -hmm. stuff. Because, I mean, when we did the dive, for example, top, we kind of knew that he was there. Three, we called it already from before we did it, you know, we just didn't. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know. I mean, he's doing his job well. Um, he played the Senna very, very well. But, I mean... If I have to judge between or like, you know, decide between him and Razork's, uh, uh, you impact, know, yeah. impact yeah, in the game, I would definitely say Razork, you know, because I feel like Targamas has played good for sure. Uh, he did his job well. I feel like Razork kind of went uh, step above. Super Saiyan. Yeah. 
Hell yeah. Men's everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Brazlick's been popping. It's actually crazy to see a player turn around such a uh, underwhelming regular season into being so incredibly dominant across the games. We'll have to see if that if that holds up against you guys. I'm curious. I don't want to, because this is a problem. So now we're at the point in the conversation where I want to start asking specific pick band questions, which I know you can't answer anyway. So I'll just say that I'm very curious to see what the jungle pool looks like in terms of available mm-hmm. champions mm-hmm. for either side. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> see who can come out yeah, on top. Yeah, because Malrang was playing Wukong, Zin Zhao. Sejuani also looks like one of the, the new flavors. Yeah, but I mean, the context behind the Zin Zhao is like literally every other champion was banned. The jungle pool got yeah. destroyed yeah. in that draft. Yeah, it did. Yeah. <sighs> Sadly, it's not a very spicy jungle meta. As exciting as this jungle matchup is in terms of like impact on both your teams when Malik's yeah. playing well and Razor's playing well, how impactful both those guys can be. But the reality is, is there's like three champions. That's so. <laughs> still. And I mean, Jarvan Trundle Poppy, baby. Uh, lock I mean, me one and I'll do something I mean, level yeah. two. And when some of those are, op- uh, are out, then you start seeing stuff like Sejuani just randomly spawning, you know? Yeah. Yep. I mean, I don't know, champion just doesn't seem to, you know, like lose 1v1 or whatever. And at least if you have, you know, psycho, uh, you know, melee matchups on mid or top, I don't mm. know, like you can even play. Like the thing is, for example, not saying this is like good, but there's always champions like Aria that are always like, you know, bad on mid lane or whatever. But whenever there's a Sejuani in game, it just makes everyone freak out. Oh, Aria's coming. You yeah, know? It really <laughs> even though it will never chance, come, yeah. it's like, you know that there's a psycho out there that is going to start playing Sejuani Aurelia and the game becomes a fiesta. Yeah. So Can that's you... the thing with like Seju uh, uh, when when there's like jungle bans and stuff like yeah, this. Yeah, can... enables all the mids. Yeah, all enables tops. all of these, you know, Nocturne. technically weaker, but, you know... Champions. Finn's Kled, for example, I think was picked with Sejuani jungle. Yeah, I mean, yep. stuff like that. Okay? For example, if you don't have Sejuani, then you're like, okay, you would probably just win to be too top against yeah. uh, Kled, whatever, you know? Mm. But when there's a Sejuani there, you're like, ah. Oh. Yeah, she's the enabler. Yeah, um, and, I'm just chilling top. Let me chill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because uh, was it? Yeah, Mad was the ones who played the Nocturne and the Cannon thing as well, didn't they, right? Uh, I, I don't know if they had Sejuani. I don't think they had Sejuani, but they played this Nocturne Cannon and they basically looked at LNG and was like, oh yeah. my God, we're going to copy paste this. Is there any teams that you guys look at and you try to copy paste or do you guys just try to innovate on your own? Uh, mostly just innovate on our own. I don't really. Or what do you think, Lord? I mean, I don't, I don't think. No, we... we don't look at any team like uh, uh, in particular. Uh, I think we maybe looked a little at uh, as a can and pel teams, but too I, little. I, yeah, think I mean, we, we don't, we don't look too much. Yeah. I mean, we look as a whole. I guess we're like, oh, this, this is a pick that came up, you know, but not yeah. like, you know, You're not religiously yeah. studying it and being yeah. like, oh, they did this, we have to do it as well, yeah. you know. Or it's mostly like you just look at the whole region as a whole. What are interesting picks that showed up? Uh, what do you guys think about this, that, you know, yeah. that's kind of, I guess, the, the, the state extent. we're at. Yeah, yeah the extent yeah. we're at when it comes to uh, looking at other stuff. As a side note, as we kind of transition forward, Razork will be the Euphoria MVP. Currently leading the Euphoria Shout MVP. Shout out to Targamas, you Wait, smurf of a man. You are yeah. an incredible wow. center. Man, my handwriting is terrible. Can you write with your right hand? Huh? Can you write with your right hand? Uh, not really KP. at all, no. Really? No, yeah, it's like really 100% rough. KP? That's yeah. my name. Really? Two games. First two games. 100% <laughs> oh my god, that's really? terrible. <laughs> Don't, it's like I'm writing with a claw. It's <laughs> hand. Yeah, Targumus absolutely Did you cracked just write weekend. Dan? He just wanted to see if I could write with my right hand, so I wrote oh. Dan. Oh, fair enough. Um, because I'm the Euphoria MVP. My show. No, I'm through. <laughs> <laughs> my show. Just put your, your name. <laughs> just my, make, a, make a cut out of me at the end of the season. No, I. Uh, it's interesting to hear how much teams like adapt from other regions, and I'm really actually surprised to hear that you guys um, have like brought it all in. I think when people looked at you, I was always thinking maybe you guys watched more LCK, a way that you play a lot or used to play a lot with them, like trying to draft as many winning lanes as possible, accrue advantages pretty safely, and then Mad were, I mean, they just said we watch LPL. I mean, we had LPL on. He's like, yeah, I copied that level two from was it V five? Yeah, he, he just, watched it in the morning. And then he literally the watched the it in the day. morning and then did it on the stage. Now it didn't work out too well for Matt in the end, but it's one of those things that I'm curious. And obviously, because you're going to Worlds, you're gonna whether you like it or not, it won't be about watching LPL and LCK teams. You're gonna learn these things in scrims, presumably playing LPL and LCK teams. Some of that's gonna wash off on you. But um, focusing in a little bit more on the weekend upcoming, you guys confident in the fanatic matchup it sounds like overall even though you are going up against the mvp but is it like sheesh, sheesh. <laughs> the euphoria mvp Woo! wow we well, already beat well fanatic already beat the actual mid regular season mvp 
Wow, well, yeah. And all-star lineup. Let's not talk about that one. And the all-pro team. <laughs> and, and the, the all-pro team staff. didn't age pretty well. And the all-pro coaching staff. Uh, but that's staff. your guy's fault, honestly. God, it's also a regular season award. They were yeah, very good in the also, regular they were also season. Like, was... Wait, they had same wins, no? That's other teams. Like G2 had they same wins? They had the same wins, wins, same wins as G2. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. But you know what happened? G2 Broadcasting came in hot. Because you know when I was like, okay, the players are making it spicy. It's going to be quite balanced. And every team voted and all the players and coaches mm. voted. And then the broadcast truck. And uh, then who, you guys just... Who, wait, who, who was your... You can talk about it. Why don't we talk, we talk about this briefly, since I feel like we've covered most of the series. Who was, <laughs> who was your regular season MVP, boys? Who did you... Oh, MVP? Who? I mean, Niski is a fair one. But for uh, the all-pro thing, I mm. thought you guys, you guys pulled a dirty one. It was dirty. Was there not enough G2? Was there not enough Rogue? I mean... I don't remember what I voted for. We'd have to pull it out. I mean, I'm not sure if... you. Know, I mean, I'm not being salty that, like, you know, not enough Rogue oh, yeah, or whatever. No. But it's just like... It was a shock to me when I saw mm. f- four from Matt because I'm like, okay, you can make an argument for like, you know, Elioya. Mm-hmm. Uh, for sure. Niski, I mean, the thing is Capsule's already starting to show up. Larson played regular season very well, you know, but mm-hmm. the thing is Niski had the MVP, MVP narrative buff for the whole time. Uh, I don't think Niski was all pro for the record. I think that Niski was MVP absolutely, but yeah. I don't think he was the best individual player in his role. Yeah, because the thing is, I saw four people from Mad in all pro first team, and I was like, "That's too much." I would maybe put like two of them. Because hmm. the thing is, like, but this this happens this happens every yeah. year with every lineup. The only team where it might have been fair is I think G two twenty nineteen. But like Fnatic twenty eighteen, like you could have slapped any player on that lineup, and they would have been on all pro because that team when teams win, they look everyone gets to yeah. look good and yeah, this is the problem because we don't get to watch scrims you got to understand like yeah I, I i feel for the broadcast people to make these decisions because it's like all right well but the, the, maybe you don't think unforgiveness number one but we did watch that draven game where he absolutely clapped people and obviously the context <laughs> of that game is that the enemy team misplayed and there's additional context that maybe you like scrim this guy and he was griefing but then it's like i can get it i yeah, can but get why people would put him number one because he did have a pop-off season even if that was entirely facilitated by let's say like kaiser who might be who probably is like was at least in regular season the best performing support so I don't yeah know, it's a struggle uh, usually when you see like these you know full team uh making it all pro first is mm-hmm. like a team where it's like i don't know 18 0 fanatic you know like whatever EG and six. NA. Yeah. i think ed and NA were like dominating and they had like four all pros which, yeah, four, you know, right. ma- which is like five i think did genji have the same thing as well i think genji had four out of five then zeus yeah four out of five with zeus but that, yeah. that's the thing like when you uh, like i think it's perfectly fair when a mm-hmm. team is mega stomping everyone mm-hmm. to to do it but I don't know. That that might be just my opinion, yeah. as you know, like uh, as a as a pleb, uh, you know. Just I I just think it shocked a lot of people. When yeah, no, like I, I think four was, out of five. There was a lot of sentiment around it, of course. Yeah. But I remember also as well the. Um, now I'm not saying this is your point of view either. But when I was a pro player, I, I don't know if you you said this kind of sentiment as well. But like I would see someone with an all pro or like second or third, and my personal experience against him in scrims, I'm like, how the. F- did that guy win? <laughs> like he's so boosted man like this guy is like not even a good jungler and i'm looking at him like because his regular season on stage was good but on just, scrims i know he's boosted <laughs> you might just be a bit of a hater me uh, yeah <laughs> yeah maybe Dude, i mean if odo calls you a hater bro you must be a hater. i mean for example i got like i think third you know uh third all pro this person and, and i thought it was like fair i guess mm. i mean when you compare it to like my last split I, my last split was was you know at least you know Regular season was really good, stats wise, gameplay wise, performance mm. wise, and this split I was like third, and I was like, okay, that's that's fine. I think BB and like Alfari deserve to be like up there, you know. Mm. I mean, credit where credits do. So, so yeah, I mean, you're just a hater. I'm I just guess. a hater when I was a pro. <laughs> Maybe it's because I wasn't doing the contestant for right. I was like, these guys are so bad. I like the isolation. Competition and ego. That's what you need as a player. Yeah. So, Kader, you actually cared about all pro when you're a pro. No, 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 no. I just saw yeah. it, you know. Yeah. I think you do the same thing. You probably I mean, I see couldn't it. Care less, like, yeah. Exactly right. So. All those usual modeling, though. Like, he cares. He, he's like <laughs> all pro nerd. What's a, yeah, I mean, what's an all pro to a ginger god, you know? You've already got enough, got enough titles, bro. You don't need the, you don't need the all pro title. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I don't care so much, but it's like, I, I guess I have, the, I have the same as you. <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm obviously wrong, I will mold, you yeah. know? Yeah. But uh, I don't know. I don't really... I mean, it's nice to get it, mm. but it's like... I mean, if you win it, yeah, it's nice. <laughs> if you don't win it, I got third this split. I'm like, I didn't really... I was like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really yeah. But like, when you get first, you're like... Uh, I feel like every episode... Nice. We he wanted first. This. He wanted first. Every like, episode we have you on, I feel like 
fifty percent of our episode is just baiting you into getting really salty about stuff. <laughs> it's not intentional. I'm sorry, but it's just like, just like, ooh, poke the bear. Yeah, like, oh, hey, hey, on the one how you feel about that? Oh, look at this MVP. How do you feel about that? You know, like, I mean, you guys know exactly how to how to milk the content, so it's fine. Hell yeah, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm not blaming milk you guys. The Odo. And before week eight, he was already talking about old pro, so he's definitely very salty. <laughs> was he actually? Yeah, yeah. Oh, there it is. I mean, I was making Exposed. calculations. And I was like, okay, will yeah. I win? Will I not win? And I was like, mm, I probably won't win. Yeah. yeah struggle no i get that last thing Malmo. it's part of marketing you yes. have to you have to milk it mm. all right you just it's a, it's a tactical mm. calculation two things we have to discuss one is shoes no shoes the other is malmo big crowd big audience first time in a long time is, it, is your first my time first time yeah crowd? yep so wow. my fifth final weekend but never with a crowd in, so. in an erl did you ever pray in front of a big crowd ah uh, like no no like that's exciting though 700 people maybe max what do you want them to cheer do you want them to cheer your name when you use like Larson, Larson or Larson. Ginger God? Ginger and God. And Ginger God would be like crazy, but that's not going to happen. Three syllables uh, is hard. I mean, that, the thing is, people don't know unless you tell them. Maybe that's why if I'm we win you. the final, maybe I can get us to scream Ginger God. Yeah. All right. I like it. Ginger God. Ginger if you're going God. to Mama. If, if Larson pops off, Ginger God. Ginger God. We can start it with the mics. No, I mean, yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> just, just straight up just shameless bias <laughs> no if he's popping off if, if he's, he's popping off okay yeah, there yeah. you go there you go there you go but then she also the ginger dog if i fail this this is where it comes from inspired was always like ginger dog or ginger god to me uh, so it's like caps and claps and craps yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. like ginger god and ginger dog yeah. i like that and i like Larson. the double names are, are you excited about the crowd are you nervous do you have any feelings about the crowd you seem like in general a guy who's just mostly unfazed by like stuff uh i'm so hyped like uh i haven't been i don't know it's like peak weekend of my life i would say yeah, it's like the reason I became pro was mostly because I was watching like uh, worlds and stuff, and I saw like the audience, and it was uh, it's so hype. Mm. And then now I play like four final weekends without crowd, so yeah, I'm I'm really hyped. Yeah, I'm really hyped. Yeah, I'm happy that you guys made it. Uh, it's gonna be really exciting. I know because you you're old man Odawamni at this point. Yeah. You've played in front of a crowd countless times. Yeah. Sadly, it was a lot of third place matches, but I mean, there's still. They're still bangers. They're still absolute I bangers. Mean, I won most of my third game matches. I remember people hey. forget. I mean. I mean, people people will forget that I lost semifinal matches, you know, and that's why I was always in third place match. But I almost, I think my win rate in third place matches was like eighty percent or something at some point. I remember the one one of the ones you could, I cast a lot of third place matches. Back <laughs> I, we're we're united in that. Bro. I'm a winner in those, but uh, I mean, it's it's really hype because I think last time we had it was three years ago, Athens. I mean, yeah. I was I was there, and it was it was really hype, and um. I mean, it's really hype now as well. It's mostly why everyone, or like, I mean, everyone enjoys esports and stuff. Uh, you know, I'm going full PR now for sure. the esports and stuff. But honestly, I don't know, like, when you have these games, especially when we play, like, you know, finals against Mad Lions, uh, and it was in an empty studio, it felt, you know, it felt rather dull. Yeah. And now that, uh, you know, you have the energy of, like, such a venue with, like, full people, I hope it's going to be, like, you know, stacked and... Mm. I know, I'm just hyped in general just because roadshows are back. And, yeah. you know, I mean, for everyone, for, for a lot of people, it's like such a long year, even for like, you know, casters and players and everyone who's doing this. And I feel like whenever there's like a roadshow ending, it's kind of like, you know, uh, you know, like a, ha what's it called? Like a, like a happy ending for everyone. Everyone's yeah. just like so happy. It's like perfect. Yeah. Everything's like nice. You you know? a lot. I feel like it yeah. makes all worth it. Like all the work you do during the year, like, yeah. When and in the other four splits, past four splits, it just hasn't felt like a final to me. Like I played in two finals, but it just hasn't felt like it without it's, crowd and like really small crowd. It, mm. it's, obviously, yeah, yeah cash. It's like my first final weekend, kind of. I mean, and I totally get that because I think that it's really your scrim in an office all day. You come to a studio, you play on stage, and luckily we've had a crowd this season. We didn't for a lot of years, right? Or you played at home, and that was even harder. And it's like. What is it building for? Who are you doing it for? You yeah. know what I mean? And then you get to see that in a very big way when yeah. you're in a stadium where you like walk out to cheers of thousands. You know? to, me, yeah, crazy. Yeah. to me, it was starting to feel like kind of pointless to play without crowd. I was like, yeah. why, why am I doing this? I mean, it's, I, th I think from a cash perspective, a lot of cashers felt the same way about like assignments because it used to be like you sweated because the thing you wanted most in the world was to cast in front of a crowd. And when the crowd was gone... Yeah. It was still important. I mean, I, it was still I, cool. I, I cringed it really hard when I, it was like empty studio and I see you two or any of the casters from LEC having a complete banger cast, best cast <laughs> the, like in recent history that I know of. And you guys are like sweating so hard and showing so much emotion. And I just look to the right and it's an empty studio and you guys are just... All that energy and everything you guys are doing is like 
Yeah, but it's the same on our side, bro. Like, yeah, it's we, like we, you, we watch you, you pop you, off and we're going nuts, and then it's yeah. I mean, I'm like you guys. You, yeah. There's no like crowd to feed into that, you know, because yeah. it's like especially because you guys are kind of like the gateway between us between us and the crowd, you know, yep. a lot of times. And I'm like, that's really sad for for these guys. Yeah. These guys are smurfing it. The, the crowd cheer makes it so much more immersive. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing I'm excited about for all the three teams this weekend, and and for everyone on broadcast is is just that is going to be. No matter what happens, this will be an important memory in your life, yeah, and that's really cool. That's what I'm excited for you the most. About. Yeah, it'll be the biggest memory of my life. Uh, Maybe I mean you're gonna like uh, there will be more yeah. in the future. F- fingers crossed for you, and obviously like international pandemics or otherwise. You yes. know what I mean? Like this is yeah. Hopefully this is it. We are back to the normal of esports. You're gonna get to travel this year. To in NA or crowd. Mexico. Well, Actually, Iceland world felt is, is that Central America or is Mexico part of North America? I don't know technically. Iceland world felt pretty Isn't Mexico sad. Mexico City, well. the capital of Mexico. Yeah. It's yeah. tough because it's like you do what you have to do, and the competition is still very important. Yeah. But I can't wait for you to play in front of a live crowd, especially. And also, NA, bro, that's your got worlds. You win this weekend. You lock groups. You lock New York City, and that is to me what the esports dream is all about. It's like traveling the world to play games is what it's about. This league stuff, great, great way to qualify people to international. But these like big moments in front of big crowds, ugh. Sorry, I'm going Definitely on a tangent, yeah. but it's what not I'm necessarily about. traveling. Like, we traveled to China and we're quarantined for like three, three weeks. That was not the greatest <laughs> travel, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, nah. You went through that Iceland as that well. Sucked. <laughs> was Iceland all right? Iceland, Iceland was all right, yeah. I mean, China was very strict, right, with the quarantine. Yeah. yeah. I heard some of the, the horror COVID test stories in the airports. Yeah. 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 They're thorough. Players were... Eh, at least we got to have a turn of the a pandemic. <laughs> um, last thing before we close out. The most important question. Not the crowd or Fnatic or G2 or who's going to win the split, but shoes or no shoes? Or the Womney? Shoes. God the thing bless. is, I never tried no shoes. How do I even O to want O N E N? Yeah, yeah. I want my handwriting so powerful. I need to try no shoes. Maybe, maybe I was. Do you just... scream without shoes? I have like flip flops, I guess. Boom. Mm-hmm. Bring your flip flops to the studio, slap them on the way. But see, the thing is, it doesn't have that big of an impact on me. Like, I'm not so much about, you know, comfort. So you think that, but your subconscious wants your feet and your toes to breathe because of the flip flops during scrims. And on stage, they can't. This is a weird thing. I think agenda, it's true. I think you it's talk true. a yeah, lot about people. You should, you should really try it. <laughs> it's true. Actually, I should try it maybe. Yeah, flip flops to Larson, the studio. Try I know it. the answer. I mean, I'm never playing with shoes. Yeah? I can't you believe need to I have a pair of shoes. You need to put but an extra one. You, yeah, no socks. That, you uh, need to make a no socks yeah, bracket. Yeah. You need to make a new bracket. Yeah. Yeah, no, no socks. socks. I actually think I have like 85, 80% win rate with no socks this place. Has Marang or, or Comp been like, oh my Sniffer? God. Larson. Did you did someone just say sniffer? Sniffer, yeah. <laughs> did they ever complain? It's like, put your sh- socks back on. Bro, what? <laughs> oh no, dude. Because <laughs> the feet can stink. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So you just literally asked, okay, so let me rephrase it. You you asked, hey Larson, do your feet stink? Yeah. No, I'm saying that the people next to you ever complain about it. I will be fair. So you're asking, really him, stink so you're, you're asking uh, him if you're, hey Larson, you, wanna, did your, you wanna smell it? No, I don't. Hey Larson, did your feet <laughs> stink? <laughs> did your feet stink so badly that other people noticed? Is yes, that what you're that's asking? That's what I asked. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. they, they haven't told me anything. No. Okay, good. See, that's all I needed to know. I didn't, this got weird. This is, this is, this is intense uh, journalism right here. Pedro. He's like, he's deep into the end. He's like, trying to figure out what's going on behind Where the scenes. Where do you place your shoes when you take them off? Is the team upset Are because the Larson's the feet smell bad? More at 11. But honestly, Larson has some banger socks. <laughs> he does have complete banger socks. What do you mean? He has like, like SpongeBob socks and all of that. Bro, wait, what do you got? Like weird cows. Yo, got th- some cows. Just throw that foot up on the table. Just... For the people, I'm not that, uh, throw it up there. Flex, oh, show us. No, oh, no. no, all right, <laughs> no. all right. We're gonna need a sock cam and Malma, but I'm not gonna have socks on. And me, your flip flops. Yeah. Oh man, really? Huh, maybe no. You p- do whatever's good for you. He doesn't have. He's pushing his flip flop agenda. You follow your heart. Yeah, I mean, never know I, I'm a buff. boomer for too much. So <laughs> yeah, the buffs can come from anywhere. Yeah. Anyway, gentlemen, we'll see you in Malma. Have a good flight. Have a safe trip. Thanks for coming on the podcast. I hope that we get to see Peak Rogue and Peak Fanatic on Saturday. And, and if you don't, that sucks. And then whoever wins versus Peak G2. And if Ooh. not, I mean, it's going to be 3-0 so against Fnatic. Three so you're going to have 3 Fnatic. And then 3 G2. And then 3 G2. And then whatever, 18-0 at Worlds, and then we win Worlds, baby. Okay. Well. 3-0, 3-0, 18-0. Yeah. When do we just... All right. You've just... Anyone who spoiled, wants to roast Odo, the script. one loss. Yeah. You've spoiled it all. The rogue super run. The true mix-up. Yeah. What's the score going to be, Larson? Fnatic. 
Three uh, one. Three one. Three one to us. Yeah. Yeah. And then G two. Trio. We we kind of all three like quite hard against G two. So, but uh, uh, yeah, I, I think if we play uh, to our highest level, we can definitely beat them. Nice. So, what's nice. the score gonna be? Trio. <laughs> Trio. You're gonna give them just, a taste just, of just, just like just yeah, like, my, my, like put your ego on the table, Larson. I want to hear you. I mean, I was saying three one against Fnatic and like three two against G two. Three two Five against G two. Because he's concerned about the viewership. He wants the viewership yeah. to be up. He wants all the people to watch. Yeah, no, he knows three. he's three. Otherwise, he'd three zero. Larson give him back two. door game five. Sweden loses their minds. <laughs> I can see it in the scripts already. <gasps> on Corky with a package. <laughs> oh, <laughs> actual <laughs> redemption. <laughs> Just shy of the foul. Oh, you've done the casters. Done. The I'm casters. Done. <laughs> they, they think is he going to do it again? But no, he perfectly places it. He bashed. <laughs> this has been Euphoria, season ten, episode eleven. <laughs> <laughs> See you. Uh, we're doing a special episode in Malma after the finals are done with the winners of the finals to talk about Worlds, to talk about the finals mm-hmm. and everything. Be ready for that. This mm-hmm. is our, our treat to close out the season before we head to Worlds. Um, otherwise, good luck to Rogue. Good luck to everybody playing this weekend. We'll see everybody in Malma. Farewell. Farewell.